Hello, the public hearing, the Fleckman's meeting room, uh, Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass, on Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. And the application of Patrick Gunn. Um, we'll go on. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 10, for a variance on the business zoning bylaws, Section 7.4 and 8.6, table of signs permitted by the zoning district, Business A, as may be determined by the zoning board of them. To add additional signage on the property located at 357 Main Street, Map 17, Lot 23 in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following. The Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stone, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you, speak, you think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. It doesn't hurt. Anybody else who think they may want to speak? Okay. To this issue or at all tonight? All. Do <laughs> <laughs> you swear that the testimony given by you before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And the answer is I do. I do. Okay. Thank you. Um... Do we have uh, the petitioner present this evening, or do we yes. have representation? Yeah. Okay, before we move forward, uh, we have a, a letter of denial, which is part of the process. I'm going to ask our building inspector, Mark, who's here, to go through that. And uh, he also was going to do a little homework for us, so I'm going to ask him to see how he fared with that, too. <laughs> Mark? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> First of all, in school, I never passed in my homework either. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the applicant is applying for four uh, wall signs at the business known as Burger King, 357 Main Street. Um, it's in the Business A District. As the legal notice stated, you're only allowed one freestanding sign or one wall sign. The applicant already has a freestanding sign, and they're attempting to add four wall signs. That's why they're... Um, yeah, for the variances. Uh, on my homework, I found that back in 2001, uh, Burger King Corporation was issued um, some wall signage. They applied for four back in 2001. Glenn Redmond, the building commissioner at the time, issued them three, denied one. Subsequently, I, I'm gathering in 2016, there was some kind of remodeling going on where the existing signs were pulled off the building for remodeling, um, at which time they applied for a, a sign permit to put the signs up. That sign permit was denied. Then in 2018, they applied they applied, I don't know if it was the same applicant, but Burger King Corp uh, applied for another sign uh, permit for the same thing to put up the wall signs. Uh, they were denied that. Well, while it was pending, they put up the signs anyway. So Glenn Redmond issued an order of violation on June 26, 2018. On July 10, 2018, the signs were removed. And that's where we stand now. Okay. Um, Have, have, have well, I have asked the applicant, have you gone through uh, CPDC as part of this? You, a lot of times the appeal is through CPDC. Uh, when it was a, I don't know how this construction laid out. It was fairly substantial. It was over a long period of time. So, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, on August 22nd, 2016, there was a minor site plan review by CDB, uh, CPDC um, that addressed the construction aspects. At that time, the signage was part of their proposal to the board. But in the board's decision, number seven, 
It says, though signage information has been provided, the applicant has indicated that signed permit application will be submitted under a separate cover at a later date. So no signage was permitted by CPDC at the time. Mm -hmm. That was 2016 minus site plan. Uh, so I asked Andrew McNichol, you know, the staff planner, to give you know his sort of opinion on CPDC and what he thought about the signs and what they thought about the signs based on past applications and site plan reviews. Uh, Can I just ask what CPDC is? Community Plan and Development. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I believe Kristen has a copy of this for the record. Andrew's email from mm. today. No. I will give you a copy. No. Uh, in it, I'll give the board a copy. I'll pass it around. Uh, in Andrew's statement this morning at 7:30, in case the Z, in case the ZBA needs it, it is my opinion that BK needs a variance for the signed application because a a lot building which contains only one establishment shall be allowed one freestanding sign or one wall-mounted sign, or one projecting sign only. I do agree with the variance criteria one, three, and four, though I cannot agree with criteria two, as a competitor, as a competitor in McDonald's down the street has only one wall sign. The store is on a prime commercial street that is growing, and the existing signage is not appealing whatsoever as people travel <coughs> coming up South Main Street. More signage would help the area look a bit more appealing, which could help meet criteria two in some way. Thanks, Andrew. So I, I can pass that around. So the, he's sort of representing CPDC on that issue based on the fact that they didn't hear that in the minus site plan review in 2016. Okay, so we're in we're in the middle of a, a quandary of several things, but I think the easiest thing to do is to turn it back to the applicant now, tell us exactly where we are or you are, okay. and what you're requesting again. Um, is I mean, he, although this, these are not in color, it gives us an idea of what it looks like. But I think uh, you can address exactly what you okay. want to do. Okay. Sure. Um, for the record, my name is Heather Dudko. I'm at 27 Old Meeting House Road in Arbor, and, and I'm a representative of the Sign Installer uh, National Sign. Um, my name is Radwan Malmusha, and I'm with the Burger King. And I'm one of the district manager, and I do have the Radian location. So, um, as Mark explained, the proposal before the board tonight is to install four wall signs. Um, as it's been discussed a little bit, there is an existing freestanding sign um, in the front of the building um, that will remain. So, the applicant is proposing, after, since the building has been remodeled, to install a 20 square foot logo in a 27 square foot flame grilling since 1955 on the side elevation facing the parking lot in the stores. There's an entrance on that elevation, is that correct? Yes. So that would help to identify the entrance to the building on that elevation. The third sign would be installed on the drive through elevation which is viewed from Ash Street and that is also a 20 square foot logo. The fourth sign proposed is over the main street entrance and that is also a 20 square foot logo um, so as it's the, the reasoning behind the request of course is because in the district um, only one wall or one freestanding is allowed and the freestanding is existing and will remain um, I did just drive by it look does it is the renovation complete the exterior well, is complete 100 percent and as explained in the request um, the wall signage primarily would help to identify the entrance, the two entrances, and the third logo would be used to help customers and potential customers from the back on Ash Street. Um, so there, there's not an, an entrance elevation on the drive-through elevation, so that logo would not be used to identify and help people identify the entrance doors exactly, but that would be helped more to identify the elevation for motorists on Ash Street. Um, the reasoning also behind requesting four signs is for building, for, for visibility that they're open. Um, if they have a, a conservative lighted sign on the building, um, people, what, what are the operating hours there? Uh, from uh, 6 a.m. to midnight. So, right now, no, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like if you drive at nighttime, you will miss the building. You will not see it. 
So even though there is a presence of the freestanding sign um, without adequate identification on the building and lighting on the building, um, it, it, that would help customers to be able to identify the building. I just want to look at my points here. <laughs> Um, it's a commercial area. It's uh, heavily traveled. Um, there's a lot of internally lit signs, so it's in keeping with the, the area. It's not a residential area there. Um, so it's not out of character to have that type, those types of signs on a commercial uh, restaurant. Um, can you think of anything else? <laughs> So that's the reason behind the request for the four signs. And as um, the building inspector indicated, they did previously have signage on the building, and I'm not quite sure um, from the history in 2001 how that was all permitted. Um, but they have utilized wall signage in the past there. And that's about all I have. What's the status of your uh, freestanding sign? It's uh, non-functioning. Is that correct? Yeah. There's a panel. Is it on one side? I one believe side. there's a panel missing. Yeah. And there's the power needs to be. Yeah, one side it's missing, and we just reset the power, and the sign has been ordered. You're just waiting for the shipment. So they need to, they need to spruce that sign up a little bit, put a new face in. So there's two faces been ordered, mm -hmm. left and the right. Mm -hmm. Um, well, as the board usually does, it goes around and asks uh, if there are questions uh, for the petitioner. So why don't I start uh, with Eric tonight. So you requested a variance and uh, you need to meet all four criteria in order for to grant the variance. I have a little trouble right now in my mind getting to all four myself. I don't know why in 2001 some signage as opposed to all the signage that was requested was issued. But we've had our zoning bylaws revamped um, extensively. So at least under the existing ones, you know, you, it clearly is that you're going to need a variance. I don't know that adding the signs um, above the entrances would necessarily uh, demarcate them as an entrance. You, know, you could always just have a, you know, an entrance sign. And you'd have five signs, right? Because you'd have, you're going to keep the freestanding Correct. one, and then you're asking for four more. So it's hard. Not that, and we take, we take each case on its own merits. None of them are necessarily binding on the board for the future, but I would imagine that competitors uh, in the neighborhood may see this and come in and, and ask for similar signage, which can create a problem because you know we've got Route 28 there. If everyone in the district gets to have four additional signs that, that just because they want them, can really become problematic from a management perspective with this, you know, this board, you know, charged giving the variances to, I guess, justify not giving them if we give them here. Um, so typically the variance is tailored to the specific applicant. So just going through the, the four criteria here, the first one is is usually always the toughest. Um, you know, which is circumstances that relate to soil conditions, shape or topography, which affect the land or structure in question, which do not generally affect the zoning district which the land or structure are located in. So similar um, businesses share um, a multiple street intersection um, configuration, which, you know, again, is not specific, you know, to the applicant here. Um, you know, I don't know that the literal enforcement not having signage would put you know, Burger King at a competitive disadvantage because it's not that you don't have any signage. You, you do. You have a freestanding one that's already there, and the um, building itself is, is branded with Burger King's corporate colors. Like you could drive by and you would associate those colors you know, with Burger King. So I don't know that you know, number two, at least in my mind, you know, that it 
it go it survives that hurdle there. Um, and then again, the three and four, you know, it, it's hard because again, you know, the rule is there for a reason. So you know, does it you know, is it substantially detrimental to the public good? I mean, if you have if you're you know allowed one sign and you're getting five. That's you know a, a fairly big departure from the rules that you know the, the select persons have put in place for the town. So I guess that's where I'm going to reserve any further comments. Can I can I just kind of rebut that a little bit? Of course, <laughs> I mean, rebut away. <laughs> I don't know if rebut's the right word, but um, I think I would just argue a little bit about just how the building itself is situated on the lot, mm -hmm. um, where there is access on all four sides I mean you can come in through Main Street go through the drive through go around right. come in through Ash Street mm -hmm. go around park so it's unique in that it's not as some of the other stores are in a in a strip mall where there's one entrance sure. there's no back entrance there's no back view there's no going around the back of the building to go in so I would just kind of reiterate that the way that it's situated on that parking lot mm -hmm. um, in the access for vehicles coming in this you know from Ash Street and from South Main both ways mm -hmm. that it creates its own unique it creates it's a, a it's unique need to have the signage on the building and I would also say that for people you know who are traveling who are not from Reading who are from out of town who are visiting who are with their children or um, who are not familiar with the area that if they're at, traveling at night and they miss the sign um, you know, they, they're pulling into a parking lot at 10.30 at night, that to have something illuminated, a reasonably sized sign illuminated over the entrance doors that confirms to them where they need to enter, where it's safe to enter, it's lit to enter, that's the proper entrance, and they're not kind of wandering around um, trying to figure out which door they need to go in. So that's Can kind of- Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. So <laughs> your presumptive competitor McDonald's mm -hmm. literally right down the street mm -hmm. also shares two access points through mm -hmm. two separate streets mm -hmm. could you distinguish for me that scenario versus the one that you've laid out here I really can't because that's not my I have not researched that property and um, the argument is for this particular client sure no, this I, particular I, lot, I get so, that yeah. but I again so you know just having been in Reading, I yeah. can tell you that maybe two buildings down. Yeah. Uh, there's an entrance on Main Street to McDonald's. There's a, a secondary entrance. It's kind of a, a strange intersection. I don't think that it's <laughs> Ash Street, but it's like maybe 10 feet beyond mm -hmm. Ash. It's a strange mm -hmm. configuration, but they've got two entrances mm -hmm. as well. So again, for me, parcel, or I'm sorry, um, component one here, the criteria, is that it doesn't, it's specific to your request and doesn't generally affect the zoning district um, which the lander structure is located in. So I guess maybe I'm making an assumption that McDonald's is in the same district, but if it is, I would say, you know, it's hard to, you know, distinguish between the two, at least for me. Okay. <coughs> All I've got is to Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, as has already been referred to you, <coughs> getting a variance in the zoning board is probably one of the most difficult yep. things yes. to do. Yes. <laughs> uh, and as Eric did, I went down through the criteria for granting one myself. And uh, looking at it from the perspective of four signs, mm -hmm. as opposed to one, two, mm -hmm. three, okay? From the perspective of looking at four, uh, I had a real problem with number two, which is the hardship one. Uh, that, that's a very, very difficult one to justify in my mind for the four sides. Uh, number one, which is condition, soil condition, shape, and topography. Uh, I'm looking at it from the standpoint mostly of shape because you're at a, an intersect there, which is, I'll say it's a little unique compared to other properties. Uh, so I can rationalize in my own mind that maybe some kind of signage on Ash Street mm -hmm. might be appropriate. Uh, 
and uh, the, the standing sign, in my view, is already a signage on Main Street that I think serves the purpose. Uh, as far as three and four, uh, I really wasn't having a great problem with those two in terms of uh, my being able to grant a variance. Again, uh, if it was fewer than the four, uh, it becomes much easier for me to rationalize uh, enforcing it. So, I guess from my perspective, all four signs is a tough sell. And uh, the one that I guess I'd like to ask you a question about is not so much the circular Burger mm -hmm. King signs, but that horizontal sign. Yep. And how critical do you see that kind of a message being to the business? Okay. I mean, if you had it or didn't have it. Uh, to me, it doesn't come across as something, it, it, it didn't turn me on. Yeah, yeah. I look at it, okay? <laughs> Yeah. And so I don't know what the public view of that thing would be, but uh, so it's, why do you think <coughs> you really need that one? Can you adjust that a little bit, the flame grill? <laughs> it, it, it just... Is it part of the brand? Is it part it, of the it's Burger part King of the brand, brand, and you know it's like... If I went to see another Burger King, would I see that sign there? Yes, you will. Nowadays, everybody was on a model. That's one of the requirements they have. Mm -hmm. I'll pass on any further comments. Huh? Okay. At the moment. Oh. May I make a comment about that? Yes. Um, <laughs> I know um, I haven't been before the board for a long time, so um, I don't know if the application can be altered while discussion, if, since we applied for a certain um, application of four signs. Mm -hmm. um, if in your discussion, if there's some um, leeway, in taking two signs out. I don't know if the, the application has to be voted on as it was submitted or if within discussion it can be altered I'll and something can be approved. I'll let the chairman that um, because there you know we can we'll vote on it, but I, we can have some discussion about that if um, there's some support for one sign or two signs um, if that can be voted on here. It is uh, there's a possibility yes. I mean <coughs> in variances before we have altered the request uh, made by the, uh, okay. the applicant. So uh, during the discussion okay. period, you may get something, may yep. you, you may get nothing. <laughs> I know that sometimes th when, I, when I've gone, they vote on the entire application and they, ca they can't alter it while we're at the meeting. So I just wanted to clarify that. There's nothing that I know of in 48 okay. that says it can't be altered. Okay, great. Mr. Chairman, if I might, uh, typically, as long as the request is for less than was advertised, it's typically not an issue. You can't grant more than was advertised. Right. But if, if it's scaled down, it's typically not an issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I'm tending to agree with what we've heard from the other members. I won't go through a long solilo soliloquy about that. Uh, I do have some questions. Mark, if you could walk us through again the construction. That's what I'm concerned about. Now, how long has the business been closed for renovation? How, how, how long have you been closed? You, you, absolutely, little, you're absolutely not selling. Over a year. You, you are not selling anything no, no. now. A little over a year. A little over a year. Okay. Before that, then, it was open for business. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, it sounded like they had put up four signs at one time, and Glenn gave them an order to cease and desist, and they had to remove those signs. And that, and so consequently, when this building was closed for rehab, uh, it had no signs on four sides of the building. It just had the one freestanding sign. Is that right? If I may clarify, and I'm sure the applicants are going to correct me, <laughs> as I, I'm going to try and correct you, they're going to try and correct me. Okay. I, I, I took notes. I, as far as the, via, the signs going up and the violation, that was well after. The first construction was 2016? Yes. 2018, some signs went up in June 14, 2018, uh, June right. of 2018. Um, Glenn issued a violation notice at the end of June in 2018, and they were removed uh, July 10th, 2018. So it was after the 2016 construction in 
the removal of the original signs. Oh, yeah. so I, I wasn't here, so I can only walk you through stumbling. Right. So I, I guess the question is, was the was Burger King open for business in July of 2018? No. So it's been closed for over a year for renovation. Over 18 months, we were closed. And we put the sign, sign was put up while we were closed. Then we, they come down. So when we opened the door, there was no signs. There was no Burger King logo, no nothing when except you, the standing. Okay, when you opened the door, opened the door for what? For business. Are you, are you in business right yeah, now? Yeah, we are. You were selling yeah. hamburgers yes, out of are. Burger King? Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, that was my question. And, and, you know, as the other members have mentioned, you have to meet the uh, variance criteria. Uh, I am having uh, difficulty with number one, mm -hmm. photography, soil conditions. Shape, it is unique in that you, I, I look at it as more of a, a like, like a, a business on a corner. And I know we've had that before, businesses on a, a corner lot with street frontage on two sides of that business. And I believe that's allowed to have a sign on one side or they're allowed to have more signs than just a conventional frontage on the, on the street. Is that right, Mark? I would, I would say that it, I could not find it in zoning where it said that, but I think it's been a past common practice yeah. in town. Yeah. Objection there. That is, is, is that right, John? I mean, you, you've been on the board for a long time. Yeah. We'll, we'll come. <laughs> is, isn't that, that's, that's my understanding. In the past, we've allowed signage on two, if it's a corner lot, signage on both streets. Well, before there was a square footage um, criteria. criteria for signage and as I keep reading through this the most modified section of the bylaw on Red I Square is signage it seems to change about every mm -hmm. uh, six years and we get an, an update and whatever so it's very difficult to, to follow but when it's on the corner you look you can look at other businesses they have something out front which is the main on the opposite corner or in the rear uh, is something relatively s much smaller than what is advertised in the front. The square footage was the determining factor. I don't see that in the table now. So You won't find it in the table. That's yeah. why I was said, you know, I talked to Glenn Redman, the, the building commissioner for 26 years. He said yeah. it was common practice where they would split square footage when buildings had two frontages and stuff like that, but it, it was just a practice. It wasn't mm -hmm. written in stone. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's kind of what I wanted to clarify okay. here. So so as I say, I'm I'm having difficulty other than that issue that it I I'll grant it that it does have you might say frontage on two streets mm -hmm. here, Ash Street and Main Street. Uh, I, I do I do see in one of the in one of the zones there is clearly is a line that they're allowed a second sign, but it's in the PUD. It's a different mm -hmm. zone, so it's not it's not um, clear in the business A zone. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the business yeah. A zone, zone is pretty specific yeah. of what's yeah. allowed or not allowed. So okay, so, so is that in to me uh, hardship allowing four signs, that, that's kind of, uh, I'm, I'm not fully convinced on that one. And number four, to me, I, I seriously think that uh, the granting of four signs would uh, be substantially derogating from, from what the, the town has in their zoning bylaws. And I, uh, I would certainly oppose that. I, I could see, and I think Sai maybe alluded to it, that some type of logo or, or smaller sign on Ash Street side of the building, and the you have the freestanding side in front. Now I take it the freestanding sign. I believe I heard you say that's being repaired and that will be illuminated. Yes, it will. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know what the square footage is. Uh, I don't know. Did I see them in here? I, I can't recall them. But so be it. I leave that up to enforcement in regards to square footages allowed. 
uh, on that. I, I would say I would be in support of the square footage that's allowed. And if you want to split it between two signs, maybe one in the front, the freestanding sign, and a logo in the back that would then do that, but not go over the maximum allowed signage. I, I think I might be able to support something like that. I believe they would but, just, I'm going to try and see if I can find the square footage of the ground sign, but that would just remain in place and they would just make, they would spruce that up mm -hmm. and, and fix it and, and put the proper electrical in. Now, now you were saying to, to the fact that people coming down, they're not going to know whether you're open or closed. Is that, is that illuminated sign in front going to be on 24 seven or is that turned off when you, when it's, when you're not open and turned on in the morning when you open? That's correct. Okay. Not 24 hours. Not 24 hours. Half hour before the uh, sun okay, goes so down and so maybe half so hour. It does, so that, that tells the people we're open. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. If I might just, Mr. Chairman, for clarification, it appears that the existing freestanding sign is um, 64 square feet. Mm hmm. Eight by eight. Okay. Okay, um, let me sweep up. Mm -hmm. I, I am. Thank you. Nick. All right. Uh, so that was actually my first question. The existing freestanding sign is pretty large. Um, yeah. And I see in the, in the bylaws there, 50 square feet, I believe, is what would be allowed for a freestanding sign, unless you shared it with another business. But um, So I, I'm trying to think of another sign that's that large, just dedicated for one business in that area. Uh, none really come to mind, so I look at that as a pretty pretty good disadvantage, for, pretty good advantage for your business to have such a large illuminated sign. Um, I also had some issues with the criteria. Third one I was okay with. Uh, the fourth one I agree with the previous my previous board member. I, I think four, in addition to a freestanding, is overkill. And unless it's a safety reason why you need so many signs, I don't, I don't think I could get behind four signs. Uh, I think the hardship, I think really would do a disjustice to the other businesses that don't, that would not have that competitive advantage of having four signs, which I think is too much for that location in the district. And as far as anything being particularly unique, the first criteria about the property, I didn't see anything other than, you know, maybe you have two frontages. So I could see a sign for each frontage, which has been practice in this past. Uh, so I, I think from what's realistic for this property is, you know, keep your, you know, so larger than average, what's right, larger than what is allowed, freestanding sign, and two, what meets the bylaws, sized, wall-mounted signs. Um, I don't think four is really necessary or just in this case. That's all I have. Okay. Um, I usually wait until last to do it. Uh, from what I've heard, and as I remember in town here, uh, when Mark had mentioned back in 2001 when Burger King went in and it went before CPDC, um, they authored um, three signage, three signs back in 2001, one being the freestanding sign and two smaller signs, um, which were basically on the two entrances. Uh, there was nothing basically on Ash Street that I, that I can remember. Um, since that time, however, in 216, when the modifications to the structure were being done, uh, it required that the signs be taken down. Uh, usually at that time, um, if there's going to be a verification of that, um, you would get something, an agreement with the town that you were able to do something, and if that wasn't forthcoming, you'd end up in front of either CPDC again or, or this board. But it seems to be somewhat of a cloud exactly where all this was happening. Um, however, a variance, uh, as the other uh, four members have mentioned, is very difficult. Um, to, to prove, and, and you have two, the fourth one is probably the most detrimental 
because signage is going away from maximizing uh, your location and what you what you are doing in the in the in the town, and that that has gone on for a number of years over the uh, I'm going to say the past 18 to 20 years. Now, I heard you say that you plan to utilize the freestanding sign as your marker, your marquee sign, I guess. Is that correct? Yes, well, it will remain. So that will be their main, I mean, it's, so it's considered under the current bylaws, that's basically all you're allowed correct. right now. Correct. So your variance, now that you've made that decision, would be on three other signs that you would like to put up. Yeah. Now I go back to the to the criteria of mm -hmm. uh, variance, and it's been pointed out to the board. Uh, you have the same difficulty in somewhat number one, but the one that's critical is number four when you're looking for three additional signs. And as it was pointed out, what was required, what is now required on a freestanding, is no greater than 50 square feet. You have 64. Thank you for that, Mark. I didn't know what the size of that was. <laughs> so the question is, um, is there justification for that addition, additional signage anywhere? And um, right now I'm trying to figure out exactly where that stands, but two relatively small signs over each of the entrance to me would be more than reasonable, but they'd have to be, they can't be large and dominate or fight the freestanding sign that you mm -hmm. have out front. Mm -hmm. So my question to you was, if you're using the freestanding sign as your basic marquee signage, <coughs> which you said yes to, then the variance really, you're not asking because that didn't come down, uh, you're, not, uh, you're not asking for anything on that sign because it's still there. So that's, that's all you're permitted right now. Mm -hmm. And so your variance is really three additional signs. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to get clarification four, on that. Four signs. Four additional. Four wall signs. Oh, I'm sorry. Four wall signs, <coughs> uh, which seems to be, to be overkill. So most of this has been the questions and the feelings of the board, um, but we also have a public sector uh, input at all of our hearings. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open the public yeah. section here to the hearing. And if there is anybody who wishes to speak, uh, please stand, uh, give us your name and your address, and your comment. Yes. OK. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Ferrari. I live at 20 Crosby Road in Reading. My house is at the end of Crosby Road, and the back of my house overlooks the Reading car wash and then this property that the board is discussing today. The reason I, I came tonight and to voice my objection is to the notion of uh, the residential aspects of this. That property does overlook residential properties in the sense of illumination. I don't know if any of the board members have been down in that area at nighttime, but the entire area right now looks like Fenway Park at a night game. And I'm speaking about the floodlights in that area. For the specific Burger King property, the entire building is surrounded by this red, I think it's LED lighting, that surrounds the building. It's quite bright. So the notion that if the petitioner wants to enhance the identity of the property, my goodness, how can you not see this property? Also, from you know our bedroom window overlooking, we are looking through three sets of floodlights that are in the car wash that are shining on our property. Then if you go beyond that, within the Burger King property and the, um, the loop, the uh, 24-hour loop, whatever that is, and then the other retail area in that area, it's all illuminated. It is just bright as heck. And my concern is what has already been brought up, that 
if the board decides to do this, then the other property retailers would, may want to do it. So there's more signs going up. And it's just too much down there right now. It's just overkill in terms of uh, signage, but it, particularly illumination. And uh, I don't think that's proper for the town. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Nick Safina, 221 South Street. And I also sit on the CPDC, but I'm not really here on that capacity. Um, I will say that Andrew does not necessarily speak for the board. Uh, when he writes his emails, he did not discuss this with the board. Um, I guess the first question, and it looks like board members have all hit on it, is the, the criteria for requesting a variance and meeting that criteria. Just because your property is unique doesn't mean it's detrimental. If this applicant were to argue that having multiple access points and multiple visibility from streets is detrimental to their property, then I, I, I think that that would be, uh, uh, the premise of that would be false. Um, business A has always only allowed a single sign for a single tenant. The only time you have multiple signs is when you have multiple tenants, and that's when sometimes you get into these corner conditions. Um, and a lot of the corner conditions are actually not in business A. So we've seen multiple signs, for example, the, uh, the, the Mon building, the MF Charles building rather, the, the bank there was not allowed to have multiple signs. They had to pick one of those sides and then their other sign is in the parking lot. As you noted, the, uh, the freestanding sign is non-conforming in size and likely in height. It's probably higher than 20 feet. And I would uh, advise the applicant to check on their order because if the background on that sign is not opaque, it will be non-conforming as well. Um, they currently have window signs which are non-compliant. That's likely a practice that will continue because they're probably just buying the branded material right from Burger King and applying it to their windows. They're too large. Uh, on the back side, they'll have a menu board for the drive through that's going to be illuminated and branded. Um, I think in 2001, when they were issued three signs, that was an error uh, before I sat on CPDC, but since then, we've never allowed multiple signs on business A, single business. Um, although we have discussed that, as you noted, we're constantly looking at signs to make it easier or better to understand. Um, and then I guess I'd go to their most recent renovation, which is sort of this, this kit of parts from the corporate branding, right, which identifies the building. They had the option to better identify their entranceways if they wanted to. They went through a pretty extensive renovation. Um, and that material is supposed to be branded and supposed to represent Burger King. Uh, I kind of like it. It's, it's much better than the old stuff. but. That is their brand. The entire building is their brand. So hard to argue that you don't know what that is. So that's all I thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, you heard what has been mentioned. Did you want to re re reply to that or? Um, I would just add. I mean, I'm hearing. I'm hearing everyone's comments and the, about the you know, the enforcement and the points that we needed to make. Um, I, I do think that there is some merit in trying to keep some signage on the elevation, the side elevation that has the entrance. So if the board is um, amenable to, to, to one sign on the building over the entrance on the side, um, I think we would be quite pleased with that. Um, but the main street elevation with the freestanding sign, um, that, will, that will need to serve as their their identification for the main street. Um, I think it may be for the for Ash Street. Is that a? I mean, if I, I just think for the the entrance on the parking lot, you know, there, you can't get that. Um, something above the door identifying the entrance there, I think, would be helpful. Um, but I, I do I, I hear what everyone was saying, and um, there's a lot. There is some validity to that. So. Okay. I think what we heard just now from uh, Nick at uh, CPDC, and he noted, and I, I had noted it too here, but uh, did not mention it, that when I went down there and took a look at the site and everything, you do have a large menu board in the back of the building that faces Ash Street. Uh, why is that not considered identification? I'm 
that was that I don't I wasn't part of that with the um, construction that's going to be there that's going to remain I assume for for the drive-through the menu board yes yeah yeah and how, how does that count mark with boy we kind of get in gray areas here don't we <laughs> uh, I say muddied I don't know about yeah. gray yeah, boy uh, does that have the logo on it the yeah. I'm going to ask it, uh, it doesn't have a logo per se but it just the uh, the function of it is actually a sign yeah I know Nick um, only we you have those. you have the most <laughs> background in this so how can you uh, illuminate the board I believe we exclude those from the signage count because they are sort of functional it's the same as a gas station pump mm. right. we understand that it's part of the business model but it is branded and it is identifiable it's the same as when people park their trucks clearly in their front parking lot with the big sign of what the business is and i assume that this would be the same as bank drive-throughs because it's part of the business so that came along just in the last what 10 or 15 years when when that came on board but the signage bylaw has changed so much that it used to be at one time if you had um, fluorescent or LED lights around the building or your sign, there was additional illumination which was not permitted. It's not permitted, and I'm kind of—I haven't been by the building at night. I'm going to have to check it out. If they have an illuminated band around that building, that is—that was not on the site plan review, and that is not permitted. Uh, that's yes, the only reason I brought it up <laughs> because you know. <clears throat> there seems to have been um, somewhat of a little history of difficulties as we were going through the, the uh, reconstruction modification to the structure itself and getting ready. So, and now that you apparently have an occupancy permit to be in business, you want to try to correct this ASAP um, so that you don't run into any other difficulties down there because the building inspector I'm going to say Mark <laughs> um, has certain powers, uh, and we want to get those correct. Any difficulties corrected? So, um, is there any other uh, individuals who wish to speak this evening from the public? Hearing none, I'll close the public section uh, of this hearing, and I'll go back to the board. Um, and what, if I'm if I'm correct? Um, you're saying that right now you uh, would modify uh, your request you, utilizing the freestanding sign out front at 64 square feet as your major marquee sign. And you would reduce um, your re request for a variance on too small. And we'd have to get a, Mark is, is going to do it because we have to put a number to it uh, to what size signs for the entrances over the two entrances that we're talking about? That, that would, that, Mr. Chairman, that would be up to the board, not to Mark. Mm. Well, um, uh, then I excuse me. I, I only I enforce the bylaws. I I don't I don't make decisions on what's allowable square footage and not allowable square footage. That would be up to the board if they're going to make a okay. decision. Mm -hmm. Respectfully. I just want to confirm with the board that the, the entrances as they stand, one is on the parking lot elevation mm -hmm. and one is on Main Street elevation. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. So the Ash Street drive through elevation does not have an entrance. So if it's, if it's of the opinion that a sign facing the second street is appropriate, I just want to be clear that that's, that Ash Street does not have an entrance elevation. Okay. Does not have an entrance door. So to modify the request, a small sign over the entrance doors on the parking lot elevation we feel would, would be helpful. And since the, there's an entrance door on Main Street, a sign on that over that door may not be appropriate if the freestanding sign is remaining on Main Street. Does that make sense? I just want I just want everyone to be clear where the entrance doors are. So when you say over each right. entrance, one entrance is Main Street. Well, so you're only asking for one 
additional sign. So, so I took two. 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 Yeah. But I only heard um, you're not you're not asking for one on the parking lot, which is fronts Main Street, because of the freestanding sign. Right. Yes, they are. You are asking for. So do you want one, with, like one here? Yeah. One. Okay. This is here. So, so, from over so, here. Yes. Yes. Take, take a look at the sign. Maybe this is the best way. Sign number one, two, three. They got here. Yep. I think they're asking for sign number four, right? Which is the main street entrance. Yes. And you're also asking for one facing the parking lot. Sign number one. Sign number one. Sign number one. So we would and eliminate the others. You would eliminate. There no uh, flame grilling since '54. Take that out, and the one on Ash Street. Take out. Okay. Well, I think we're just asking okay, for two so, now. So this is sign number four here, over the over the entry. Yeah. And yeah, that's right. for sign number uh, one, which is on the front entrance, which is right. the major entrance. And eliminate that one there, yes. which is the flame grilling, two. and eliminate that one. That's what they were asking. Okay. Not, not saying that's, correct, correct. Is that correct. modifying the request? Correct. Yep, yep. So we, we now got this down to <laughs> sign number one. Sign number four. And sign number four. Okay. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, now, to do this, we need a square footage assigned to this because we can't use the word small. Well, we do have, and we do have 20 square foot. foot the well, the, 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 question, the question is, 20 square foot, that's a quarter, that's a third of the, the right. marquee sign out front. Right. So, would that be a little bit uh, overkill? We could, it could be reduced. The 20 square foot is a circular measurement, just to be transparent. The overall height is five foot. So there, were, there are four foot. We do a uh, four foot. It'd be 16. It'd be a little less than 16 with a circular mm -hmm. measurement. Um. <laughs> you know, it's I, well, in, in, in my in my mind, I'd be looking for something um, probably not not much more than about twelve square feet. Okay, um, which is substantially less because your marquee sign is what's drawing you. You want the advertisement, but you want people to be safe coming into the structure and where they're going to park and whatever, so you want the two two entrances to be done. Um, actually, you have a an additional sign in the rear, um, which is the marquee board uh, where you, for the drive-through. The mini board. I mean, the town has more or less, in a signage bylaw, have, have accepted that. But it's not calling it per se a sign. I don't think it's calling it a sign anymore. But I'm Mark, I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> no. <laughs> your your thoughts? No thoughts. No thoughts. <laughs> have you people looked at this the space where you want to put those twenty square foot signs in to determine whether they might look too big for that area? Did you want to put it in? Because I, I just drove by the place and I said a, five, a 24 square, square foot sign we, we did. may not look that great. Maybe a little something a little smaller would look I think, aesthetically I think, be a I, lot better. Huh? I think 16 would look great. Mm -hmm. I believe 16 would look better. 16 would look the building is like tall. There's no doubt about it in my mind. <laughs> yeah, well, something, little something little smaller I think would, would look nicer, mm -hmm. okay? It really would. That's my thought. Um, what how, small, thinking, how small, I don't know. Huh? What I'm thinking now, and I'm proposing, number one, you have a freestanding sign that I'm considered grandfathered. Yes, I do too. 64 square feet. It 
is over by 14 square feet over what's allowed with kind of zoning. You're asking for additional signs over and above the 64 square foot sign. I am opposed to that. I, I don't like that idea at all. I would say my thoughts are work with your 64 square feet that you grandfathered come up with a 50 foot freestanding sign 50 square foot freestanding sign and you're allowed 14 square feet to put a sign on the building that would equal the 64 square feet that you have now and that's grandfathered and to me that's what we should be working with in my way of thinking i don't think we should be allowing additional signage I just want to see if I understand this correctly. So one freestanding signs allowed by right and one wall mounted signs allowed by right. Is that correct? No, okay. correct. Just one. One or the other. One, one or, or the other. other. Okay. All right. And would you consider you have a main entrance on this building? Yeah. Okay. Main you, you have two. Would you consider two. one the main entrance, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all I have. I just want to understand that. Well, I, I have a suggestion. Um, this has been going on for some time now. Um, you could ask for a continuance to go back because we're not going to prove something that's not in print to begin with. So uh, we could ask, depending upon what amount of time that you need, to go back and modify what you're asking for at the present time and bring it back before the board at a later date. It would have to be a date certain. Mm -hmm. Because realistically, uh, the board stamps everything that it has in a decision. Yeah. If it's going to get a decision, if it's not on paper and that we haven't approved it, it yeah. doesn't yeah. go through. Yeah. So. I think we'd, we'd like to take that suggestion and ask for a continuance and we can reevaluate what would be appropriate there. Well, um, you will have to re make that request before the board and the question would be, um, first of all, when we have open dates, Kristen? Um, we have made... First and 15th and then I don't have June available right now. But I know we have the first and the 15th. We'll go May 1st, please. Can you get it done by May 1st? That's, that's, that's basically two weeks. Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> so we'd like to request um, from the board to continue into the May 1st meeting. Okay. Hey, one other comment before we okay. lower that. Uh, listening to every, all the commentary around the table in, in this hearing tonight, my rationale suggests the following. You have, I agree with Bob, a grand, grandfathered, oversized, freestanding sign, which to me serves the purpose of identifying to everybody that Burger King exists from Main Street. I mean, I frankly don't think you need a sign another sign over the side entrance dot facing Main Street. That's my view there. So I can envision at best one additional sign over what I'll call the main entrance, which is on the parking lot side facing Capri and all those other places, okay? Sign one. So I could rationalize asking for one sign. Uh, and I think Bob even thinks that's not probably not necessary. But I don't know well, what else the board members think, but <laughs> that's that's probably where I could find my way to favorably voting. Okay. okay. That, thank you for that. Well, as, as I was saying, you know, I've already stated what, what my thoughts are on it, and either you know you stick with the single freestanding sign you have now that's grandfathered and oversized, or else modify that to meet. 50 square foot and then you still have 14 square feet that you could then apply to a wall sign. That's my thoughts on that. Um, I would, Nick? I just make 
Actually, I'm going to make the same comment again. Uh, could someone point out to me where it says one of the others allowed? Because I see one freestanding sign per lot and one wall malted sign per business. So. Paragraph M of C. Oh, they can't have both the freeze. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, uh, my question uh, comes to you. Um, if if uh, we want to modify the existing freestanding sign from 64 to 50 square feet, what is involved? My personal opinion, I'm not an attorney. No, 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 no. I think you should ask the sign in, in terms, in, in terms of in building and it being a so structure. Uh, as the building commissioner opinion wise, you're going to take a grandfathered sign, you're going to modify it to make it conformant, which means now you're going to have to lower the height. If it's over 20 feet, which it appears to be by the eye, I have oh, nothing okay. that tells me the height. So, by the eye, I, I would say it's sure. over 20 feet. So now you're gonna have to lower that, and now you're gonna apply 14 feet to another sign, which still needs to be allowed by variance, regardless of what that you do to right. the grandfather sign. That would sign. be the variance. Right. That would be the variance. I, I think. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think the worms just start coming out of the can. Yeah. Well, uh, my take on it would be to leave the 64 square foot marquee sign there. Um, apply for, because no matter how you're going to do it, you're going to need a variance of some type. Um, apply for a variance of a relatively small sign over the either the front door or the parking lot side where you front Capri and the, the rest of the mm -hmm. strip mall there mm -hmm. uh, as, as your basis. I think there's enough that you've heard from the board that you can go back and, and I would suggest uh, you might want to look at what is all already on the property yeah. in terms of other lighting and yes, whatever yep. uh, so that when you come that. in it's just like one last time yeah uh, so we can get on with business yep. uh, but I would accept the motion right now unless you tell us otherwise that you want the first or do you want the 15th maybe request the May 15th yes. okay. to continue the hearing I move to accept petitioner's request for a continuance until the May 15th zoning board meeting. Second. 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 All in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you very much. Thank you for your information and input. I Thank you. do appreciate that. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Sorry to make you wait so long. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nothing is easy anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second hearing this evening. Um, Case number 1908, which is 12 Winter Street. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass. on Wednesday, April 17, 2019 at 7 p.m. On the application of Catherine McLeod, pursuant to Mass General Laws 48, Section 9, for a special permit, under the Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 7.3, to construct a deck to an existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at 12 Winter Street, Assessor's Map 23, Lot 73 in Reading, Massachusetts. Um, unless there's an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, 
CPDC members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Linfield, Stone, Wilmington, Wakefield, North Reading, and Woburn. Testimony given before the board is taken on the oath. You've already taken the oath, so we don't have to do that. Uh, we can move on to the hearing itself. So again, I'm going to ask uh, Mark, our building commissioner, um, to see what he has found in the, in uh, doing his homework, which we had asked of him. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant uh, proposes to build approximately a 19 by 30 foot deck on a pre-existing non-conforming house. The house is non-conforming by virtue of a special permit that was issued in 2011 to tear down and rebuild an, a pre-existing non-conforming structure. So the non-conformity is there by right from the Zoning Board of Appeals. The applicant is looking to extend or alter the footprint of that nonconformity. Um, so the the actual um, special permit was based on the uh, right side setback of 11 feet versus you know the required 15. In the meantime, Robert has brought to our attention about they are over the 25 percent lot coverage by. Um, I got 80 square feet also, um, which the board can address during this. Um, since it's not a variance, I don't, I think it's in the, the board's purview to, to address this at the same time. My homework was not as good as yours. <laughs> well, we need to get everything straightened out one way or another. Uh, I'll ask the petitioners uh, if they wanted to address the board and tell us exactly what you want to do and why. Uh, sure. So I'm actually not the petitioner. I'm representing the petitioner. Catherine oh, okay. is my sister-in-law. They had a previously scheduled trip. So I'm uh, Anne McLeod. I live at 71 Harrison Street in Reading, and I'm here on behalf of Catherine. Okay. So just to clarify who I am. Um, so. The basic situation is they currently have a patio. Um, the, the patio, right off the patio, the ground slopes down, so you can't just extend the patio to make it bigger. So the desire is to put the decking in so that the full area can be usable in the backyard um, to the edge of the house. So that's the general concept. OK. Um. Questions of the questions of the petitioner. I'll start this time with Nick. Um, could you could you go on a little bit more about that? So why is it exactly that you had to build a deck to the size it is right now in the, this plan? So we haven't. To no, why you proposing? Why you want to? Because um, where the the patio is, um, where the patio sort of you can't make the patio you can't extend the patio because the ground is sloped. So you would need an actual structure in order to use the full sort of back of the house area as outdoor space. So if you were to decrease the deck a little bit to get to under 25% lot coverage, is that something you think you could do? That is something. Uh, do, we, do you know how much we would have to decrease it by to get to the 25% so, coverage? Um, so my quick math. Okay. <laughs> So currently the deck is approximately 19 by 30. If you took three feet off, so it ended up 16 by 30, that would equal 90 square feet, so you'd be under by 10 square feet of the lot. So you'd be under the percentage for the lot coverage. And that would be making it shorter, not... But you'd still have... You'd still need the variance because it would still... You still have the special permit the request to be got in the setbacks. But this would alleviate one. Consult my consultant here. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. So this is the house. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. This is the house. So 
surface be like? Could you scale that? All the way across. Huh? Yeah. That would take 90 square feet off. Yeah. And it creates that problem, that special problem. Breaking this out of the rectangle. It would be taken off the, I came up the very outside end. end. So it would still go to the edge of the house like this. Oh, yeah, over none here, of that we're would just change. making it shorter. Right. That oh, yeah. would be 16 to the My thoughts oh. were this back four feet. And even if I'm before the door, it's 15 feet. Which is 25 percent. Which is. Yeah. If you want, I'll make a. You know, it, it, my, my suggestion, I think, Mark, on, on this, if you're going to cut the deck back, I would cut back the 30 feet to 26 feet. So you cut four feet off the property line, you meet the requirement for the side yard setback, you also meet the requirement for the deck size is let, would make the whole structure 25% less footprint, you wouldn't even have to be here. If I could correct your math. Yeah. So if you took four feet off 19 feet, no, that's 76. Four, four feet off of 30 off feet. Of 30 feet. So you go 15 feet from the side yard. In other words, no, 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 no. you'd be taking it off the 19 foot number. Why? Why? Why would you be taking four feet off 30? So, so I you can, meet so the I can be setback 15 of 15 feet off the setback. So I can be 15 it, foot from the side sorry, yard. 26. Property you, line. Yeah. So if you're taking it off here. I'm going this way. Right, so it's 4 by 19. It's 76 feet. It's too short. It doesn't equal the 80 feet that's needed. Okay. So you go excuse, 19 excuse feet by 4 me. feet. Go, go 4 foot 2 inches then. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it, it's, the, the, the important thing here is that you don't have to come before the board if you meet the setback requirements right. and you're under the 25%. By cutting the 30 the 30 foot deck back, you meet the side setback requirement of 15 feet. And, um, you, and you go under the 25%. And you're under the 25%, which is has become an issue that we have to correct at the same time. So, so I am checking, uh, attempting to check. But I think the concept of what I think what you suggested with making it 16 rather than 19, it gives you more usable outdoor space because that sloped. If you bring it in this way, that sloped area is. I think what the board's trying to get a yeah to direct or to make a suggestion is if you take it off the 19 foot side, like Bob has suggested, mm -hmm. you're not here at all. You don't even need a special permit. It's go down and explain it and. You issued a building permit. Yes, I, I, I assume the reason that I'm here is because they want the deck to be that wide okay. so that they can use that sloped yard. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think the suggestion is if you if you move it in four feet, then like you said, you wouldn't have to be here. Right. The fact yes. that if you left it exactly where it was, you're really not convening, con creating a new nonconformity. I mean, it's what it is now for a setback. But you still need a permit. That's it. I, have I guess if you had to get the, I guess if you had to talk about the uh, lot coverage, is that a included in a permit or is that no? It has much? to be addressed though. So. It would te te technically it should have been. That's a variance issue more that, so than yeah, a special so, permit, that, right? So my, I have one question for you. Are you a gambler? <laughs> uh, <laughs> because what you're saying is if I stick with not taking it off the 19 feet okay. and not off the 30 feet, I still need the board's approval and I need four out of five votes. Okay. If, if you want to go forward on that, if you do not, do not get four out of the five, you're shut down. I'm shut down as in I can never build a deck or I have to go with the deck that comes in from the side that I never have to had reapply. To come you have to reapply. In two years. Yeah. Reapply in two years to do a non-conforming deck or to do any deck? Do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, I do. Do you see I what I'm I think the two, years, the two years is on a variance, isn't it? Is it? Right, so if I didn't want a special permit or a variance, if you guys didn't vote for me, then I could just go with what you're but, but see the problem yes no? you have a double problem the, the problem is and what you're requesting right now you've got to be able to uh, get four out of the five votes here to go in that direction and number two 
we're going to need a variance unless we can do something uh, to get under the 25 feet, the 25 percent. 25 percent. Can I ask why the lot coverage is a variance versus a special permit for a non-conforming lot and structure? Um, when 7.3 and then 7.32 came about, it was addressing a series of decisions that were made through the courts over the last 20 years. And it was saying that if you are going to expand, the, basically expand upon an existing um, non-conforming uh, structure, it needed to be in the form of a variance. Then it came back and a modification of that is you could, you could do it by a special permit to keep the site, site line and it does not encroach any further on the, on the side front or rear of the property. So what I'm going back to, my historical background is um, I, it's, I'm kind of tipping my hand here, but um, I've, gone, I've gone past the property now uh, a number of times, and I look at it. Uh, the board has to make a finding on the 732, and you'd have to have four out of the five. Uh, to me, um, that is not, uh, that is a substantial uh, if, if you look at the mass of the building in comparison to your neighbors, that is a substantial change. You're asking for additional change to the substantial change. To me, that doesn't mean anything to the board members. So I'm already tipping my hand from the stats, from the standpoint that I'm saying that I I could not vote for seven three two because of the, the size and mass of your building in comparison to the rest of the neighborhood, especially to your two main abutters, the one on each side. And now putting a deck on the back, you're further encroaching, especially to the neighbor to the right of you. Neighbor to the right who has said they're okay with it. I don't know if that matters or not, but they Well, see, sure. that the problem is it's not if they're going to be, if they're going to be alive, right? Yes. In, I, I just thought I'd mention it. It was a fact passed to me by the person <laughs> I'm representing here today, so I felt obligated to share it. I didn't know if it would sway you, but I figured I'd pass it along. I, I, I think you've been put into a position by <laughs> not being a, a a party of the decision. You're a, you're a sister to the party of the I, decision, and boy, I, yeah. if I were you, I'd be very careful. And uh, you have a couple of options too. <laughs> yes. One of which to ask is to for continue. A continuance. I feel like I learned something <laughs> at this prior, and I think I'm leaning towards that. Uh, yeah. That feels. To be honest with you, John. You know, I went down there myself, mm -hmm. looked at it, massive, massive house. Look down the side lines. I see that the backyard looks like it's very well used by the children and the kids. I did not see any retaining walls or anything that would indicate to me. They looked pretty level to me. I went on the street that butts the backyard and looked through those houses up there down into your backyard and that I did not see any dramatic changes in topography to be honest with you. I, I don't see why that deck couldn't go further out or a patio. Or, that's my personal opinion after viewing the property. Uh, and you know, I, I think you know you, you've heard the, the previous case. You know what your options might be in this case, and you may want to go back and talk to your sister when she comes back from her trip, and uh, uh, let her see. She can actually view this on Reading Cable TV if she would like oh. when she comes back. <laughs> I agree. Oh, so she's learned two things. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So she can see how the board's leaning and how. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, each individual member views this. Okay. 
Ah. And I, I didn't even get to sigh. <laughs> I apologize for the comment. The writer is that uh, <laughs> Nick's got something to say. I'm almost done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I think, think we should make up. I don't think patio is even count as far as the law coverage. So you could. No, the patio doesn't. Yeah, the so deck just does. keep that in mind too. Yeah. If you don't. Right. The patio doesn't count if right. it's at ground level. That doesn't count as any lot coverage to that giant coverage. patio if you want. As no. soon as they built that deck. That is a structure that's attached to the house, and that goes into the formula for lot coverage. <laughs> Did you want to make a comment, Mark? I'm waiting for the hearing to be closed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um. Before I make a comment, not that I'm you guys. Okay, okay. I, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't even think we could vote on the variance because it wasn't even advertised as such. Well, Mark seems to think to correct an issue uh, on the property because it's before us, we can do that. Okay. Um, law coverage aside, just keeping with the uh, setback, if, just to be quick, I think if you maintained the 11 foot setback and didn't encroach further into the setbacks, I would be okay with it. My view is that uh, you've got to get within lot coverage. Whether it's 80 or 90, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the number is, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll assume you're correct. So you got to get within the 80 feet, okay? I think you have to do that. That's the, my well, personal And, and just, to be, just, so I, just to clarify, to make sure I'm understanding this, the, it's that with the deck, we would have an issue with the lot coverage. We don't have a lot coverage issue with the patio the way it is now, right? Is that you have no, you have no, we have no issue, issue with, with the patio. The way no. it is now. Okay, I just wanted to clarify because yeah. I thought someone said there was an existing issue and that made And, and I agree so. with okay. Nick that I, as long as you keep that setback on the side no greater than what it is now, I don't personally don't have a problem with it either. Okay. Okay. Eric, you don't have to say anything you don't want to say. No, I mean, I'll be very, very quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, of the two issues that you have, um, the 25% coverage. If I could analyze that under a special permit criteria, which is not substantially um, more detrimental than what's already there, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I'm in the minority, though. You need four out of five votes. But I'm just voicing my opinion here. I wouldn't have a problem with it. I don't know that the board can do that. I mean, if, if we can, wonderful. Um, it was always my understanding that that was a variance issue. So that's something that's up in the air for me. But with a special permit, I have no problem. With a variance, I probably will have a problem. In terms of the special permit, if you were to get beyond the um, uh, coverage issue, I would say it's extremely straightforward and offer no opposition. So. Those are my thoughts. Okay. Uh, do you, would you like to? I would like to request a continuance so that. To a date certain now, so. To a date. So uh, you have to see when your sister's coming back and when she's available. Yes. It was May 1st or May 15th. Are those the two options? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When does she do? When does she do back? Oh, I mean, she's due back late tonight. It was just that they already. Oh, we, oh, got we can us. wait. <laughs> <laughs> we just got the. They were assigned to the state in a spring break. And yeah. The kids are out of school, so they already had a trip planned. So they called well, me in. Okay. If you if if you're gonna modify what is before us this evening, um, you need an, a you need a uh, validated certified plot plan so that we can vote on that if that's what's going to happen. I, I just wanted to make one comment before this all gets closed just so we're sort of on the same page. I think most of the board and Eric is correct that if you're going to, if they're not going to modify the deck at all, the 25% coverage would be a variance because that's creating a new nonconformity. So 
I just want you to make you mm -hmm. aware that you'd be coming in for a variant and a special permit if you're not going to modify the deck at all. Right. My sense is that there might be a variance to the deck to get into the lot coverage. It's just a matter of, I don't what variants they would want to ask just, but what what change just, that they would want to ask for to so as to just need the special permit and not the variance so Does without sense? without putting you in a direction okay. if you heard the last hearing getting a variance is a lot more difficult than a yes. special permit yeah no okay. that's what i'm saying yes okay. yes yep i think it's just a matter of there's multiple ways to go to get within that coverage and i don't know from a design aesthetic which direction they would like to pursue right. so that's what i think we could come back with the continuance and have more of a perspective on now if you need additional time i would say to do that and get your kind of your eggs in all the basket you might want to do the 15th if you are pretty sure where you're at that still gives you two weeks to come back run it by mark and see where it is but you'll be back on on the first sorry mm -hmm. she's the babysitter some of the time That's so right. i thought she might know okay. when they're here but let me see if I have anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to 15. Should, should be first. They didn't answer you. They didn't answer me. So we're really flying. Okay. Go with first. Good. 15. I'm trying 15. to think of whether or not Matt has got in. That. That's the 17. I know. I should have yeah. for here. I, I Sorry. Think probably are. <laughs> Oh, okay. they're probably here both times. Okay. Well, may I request a continuance to May 15th? You can do that. Yeah. Do I hear a uh, motion to... I'll make a motion that uh, the board approve the applicant's request to continue the uh, hearing until um, May 15th. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Five zero zero. We'll see you on the 15th. Thank you very much. And again, she can watch it on what is the channel? Uh, 23? 22, my wife watches it on. But, you know, it all depends. Uh, I think we have Comcast. Yeah, that's Comcast. I'm Verizon's sure we can track it down. Okay, it's right there. Um, the only other thing, John, I just want to make sure. <laughs> so we need a new one of these yeah. if you change the design. Make sure we get and this one. Revised. I thought, though, that now. Is I would double check changed? with Mark before you I do it. Yeah. She was grandfathered with the large one. I think the rule changed to a smaller one during the process. Oh, so sorry. Are you sure she's going to change one? If you're going to change the uh, the dimensions of the deck, yeah. Whatever changes you're proposing, uh -huh. just make sure that we get a certified plot plan, just so that we can stamp it. Okay. I just want to make sure when you come back on the fifth, that you have that. That's all. The final what they're going for. Okay. And, yeah, it should say lot coverage too on there. Yes. Yeah. With the calculations, the <laughs> survey will know what to do. Right. You can direct them online to watch our, yeah, our proceedings as well. <laughs> okay, then, um, hearing no more, I'm going to close the subject matter in this case. Um, can I, sorry, just heard back that May 1st would be ideal. Is there any way we could go back and make that continuance for May 1st instead of May 15th? I think as long as they have enough time to get that, right? Um, can you get a plot plan yeah, to change sure, that right? fast? I don't know. Can you get a I don't know. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> I would That'd say to the applicant. I would oh, stick okay. to, I would stick to the fifteenth because it gives everybody 15th? sufficient time. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for your guidance. I really appreciate it. I mean, you'll be free the fifteenth, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find an excuse to be out of town. <laughs> and, and we take you did a, take a, a vacation. Good job standing in for your sister. Thank you. Really, that's, I think it's a tough thing to throw somebody into that. Um, I don't think we have anything before the board this evening. John, John, could I, Mr. Chairman, could I yeah. have a, just a discussion before I leave and you guys close out? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I want to make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to special permits and nonconforming structures and the whatnot based on that. I'll wait for them to leave. Based on that deck dis discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. It seems to be the board's purview that if you're extending a non-conforming along the same line, that that's okay, that it doesn't have to come in front of the board. Well, there are two, sec there are two sections, and it's, uh, it's under 7.3 and 7.3.2. Because 7.3.1 is pretty clear that you, 
you can't increase the footprint. You can't create a new dimensional nonconformity or extend an existing dimensional nonconformity. So if it's 11 feet on the side and you keep that deck 11 feet, it doesn't give you by right. It's still a special, special permit. Still come here. Um, so, right, it's a special yeah. permit. Right. I, I would agree, yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Mean. So if, if you take four feet off that deck, right, now it's 15 feet on the side. Right. 15 okay. feet from the property okay. line. The new four feet, feet increase two the inches, footprint no, of the nonconforming structure. You've changed, okay. You've increased the footprint. I'll do it whatever way the board wants. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I don't want to send people here if it's not necessary. Right. So if you were building an addition, you're extending you're extending the nonconformant footprint. Uh, it's a nonconformant structure already. I, I look at it. You make that deck 15 feet in this particular case. Yes, you're changing the footprint of a non-conforming structure. And is that the way that reads? Mm -hmm. But you are not creating any new non-conformity or an extending an existing non-conformity. But, but as the bylaw says, will not increase this, the footprint. This, this has been <laughs> an issue. I've been on the board a long time. It's been an issue for the, every year that I've been on here. We've had, you're the fourth building inspector that I've been through. And every time we come up with this, we have difficulty with it. And it goes back to all the, all the previous law cases that have been cited. And this is what has come out of it. This is uh, the result of a restructuring, or not, not a restructuring, uh, what do they call it? When they re when they redid the zoning bylaws, yeah, revised them, updated them, updated them updated, whatever. This this is one of many things that came up, and I understand that, and I'm not trying to have a fight or argue about it or say that you guys are wrong and I'm right by the way I read this. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So, if it's a nonconforming structure, even if they're increasing the footprint, but they're not creating a new nonconformity, and the, the the setbacks are met. You don't have a problem with that, mm -hmm. and I don't need to send them yet. Well, It'd be by right. Well, you got the law mm -hmm. coverage, too, right? Yeah, coverage, yeah. Uh, what about um, since uh, you're working in community uh, development too, uh, as part of your department? Um, you have access to through Gene, uh, and I think you yourself too to ask town council that very question. So that the board can get clarity on that too, okay. because it because it does. You're right. It's a good point. I didn't even think of that when I mentioned if they cut that deck back, they're fine. But it does. Yes, it's attached to the house. Then that becomes part of the footprint of the house. And well, as you all know, back you know years ago, they used to say if you had a non-conforming structure and you built a second floor. You're not making it more nonconformant. Well, right. there's arguments against that because if you're living next door to them and now you're looking from a 10-foot wall to a 20-foot wall, well, you sort of are making it more nonconformant. Yes. So it's all in the interpretation. Yeah. But yeah. I just want us all to be cohesive. Okay. Yeah, we have a pretty we standard should. in this board since I've been on. Okay. You're not creating a new nonconformity. Well, the, the issue for me was exactly where you're coming from, Mark. And if you follow that through the years, uh, that is exactly what has happened. And I think when the people from the, from the group in town who restructured the, the, uh, the bylaw, their, in their intention was, I think, but I don't know because I didn't sit there. I never sat town, town meeting to those things either. So I don't know what the... I don't know what the purpose and intent was on this one because I was never part of it. In the past, I always tried to be aware of that and what the intention and, and meaning of changes in the bylaw are. I didn't follow that when this got changed in 2017, I think it was, that it got uh, approved by the Attorney General's office. So I would, I would love to have Town Council take a peek at it and see exactly how we should be interpreting it. Okay. Because I think as a board, we've been saying if you did not, if you did not create a new nonconformity in terms of the setback controls, mm. 
then we would allow it under six three I uh, seven three two. And I have no problem looking at it that way if 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 that's how everybody looks at it. Well, because I, just because I interpret it doesn't mean I'm right. Right. You know, you, you know what I mean? But, but I just want us to all to be in a, I don't want to come to the right. board meetings and we're, we've got two different ideas about what's really happening. Sounds like so I don't, I don't have a problem. Like However, you guys, yeah. if the idea is to have less people coming in front of the board for minor right. modifications, right. then that's the way we can handle it. Yep. So I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Um, personally, yeah. good. I would still like to get town council. I was afraid you were going to say that when you said personally. Well, you brought up a good example. If you have a non-conforming structure that's two feet away from the property line and they build up a story, that could be, that would be detrimental be. to the neighbors, right? It but if fits. it was existing within the setbacks, then that would be right. So yeah. maybe, you know, the intention was to have the board look at non-conforming structures as a fail-safe to... Yeah. Something like that happening. Yeah, I don't know. But right now, it's left in the hands of this board to decide whether in their and that's judgment not it is more detrimental. Well, right. okay. In it's certain, a call it's in certain, right in, now. yes, and in certain in certain cases, properties, whatever, uh, you have a no two cases are exactly well. Well, virtually no two cases are exactly the same. I think that's correct. Right. Uh, and, and the intention is, uh, in the years that I've been here. The, in, the intent was never to get into a position that the board makes the decision on interpretation. It should be clear. It should be clear on what the board can and can't do. And if this, if the intention and the purpose on town meeting was that we would allow that, then that's fine. We need to know that, so we can rule. If the if the intent is that the the, the determining factor is really seven three one. In what is to, what is expected as an extension of a non-conforming structure, <laughs> as being a variance rather than a special permit, then we need to know that too. I mean, I don't. Maybe I'm all alone by my, you know, on this, but I, I'd rather get some clarity to this. And the only people who have the clarity are the people who voted for this in town meeting, and I wasn't in town meeting. So I don't know what the discussion was back and forth and what the intent was. But I, I know where you're coming from. It used to be if if you added to the non-conforming structure, that's a variance, period. Whether it's a second floor or you put a, uh, a, a deck on the back, and that decks had become, for this town, a major issue over the years. Because decks somehow become enclosed, and after they become enclosed, they become heated, and now they are part of the, the structure itself. Some of them have, yes. I don't mean all, but I mean, yeah. which, who wants to be the policeman that go out to, goes out and tells people that? And if you get a fire in your house, and by, by the grace of not the grace of God. It was in the the enclosed porch that you had. Insurance ain't gonna pay for it because it's illegal. You try to tell people that, and they look the other way, and they say, "You got to be kidding me." Okay, so I'll talk to Gene about talking to town council to get clarification on those, just so we're all on the same page. Like I said, I don't I don't care either way. I just want mm. all of us to be the same. Right. Same. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't take it personal. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to talk before we closed or <laughs> after we closed. So this is this is good. This is good discussion. And then, well, I didn't want to get into the whole Burger King sign thing either, but mm -hmm. that seems like a getting them to modify the existing sign and then take it. That seems like to me that's well. I know. I to you it seems like a nice solution. The, 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 I don't close. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Right. Yep. Oh, well, this is this is all off. Well, we haven't no. yet. That, that's why that's why we need whatever is going to be done which is their request um, we need it in writing certified plot plan exactly what we have to do so that if we approve it it gets stamped mm. if it doesn't get approved see you later fine but they works for me any of them can well, come back and see you and say 
Mark, what do you think we should do? And you're going to say, I'm not going to tell you what you're going to do. <laughs> okay. Anything else before the board this evening? Nothing? Do we hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. Do we hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor? We are adjourned for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.